Papercut. Hi everyone, Papercut here with a video for those gold warriors of AoE4. I've been coaching players for over a year now. At this point, I've coached a lot of gold players. Gold is the average rank with the largest amount of players, so that's unsurprising. I have watched hours upon hours of gold gameplay. With that in mind, I wanted to create a go-to video for things to work on, watch out for, for you gold players looking to rank up. Keep in mind, this video will focus on general gameplay. You can always improve on using your Civ specific attributes, but it would be a very long video to do that with all 16. Besides, it is better to improve your overall gameplay no matter the Civ you are using. So let's get to it. As always, if you like this content, please consider subbing and liking this video, checking me out on Twitch, and joining my coaching Discord. I want to preface all this information with saying that you need to play the game. That if you want to improve and you want to take the things that I'm about to teach and use that to climb the ladder, you have to play consistently. Whether this is learning a video game or this is learning math, you have to do what you're learning repeatedly for it to stick. Uh, that's why you do rep. That's why you rep anything. That's why you do anything multiple times to learn it. So if you want to improve, if you want to climb out of gold into plat and farther, I suggest playing every day. Uh, my minimum I give to people when I coach is three, three times a day, and or else you'll just notice you're not making things stick or you're forgetting what you're trying to improve on. Um, so that's just why I wanted to stay on the front end. So let's start with the first thing we wanna focus on, which is the first 15. You need to focus on just your improvement within the first 15 minutes of the game. Now, why is that? As I said, learning is a process. You can only really learn things two to three at a time. Uh, if you try to add more than that, you're going to be just slowly learning everything or not actually improving on anything. Um, the first 15 often define the game. Uh, whenever I coach people and they say, how do I beat you know, 60 longbows? How do I beat four great bombards? Most of the time I can watch the first 15 minutes and figure out where did it go wrong? Um, and the reason often people are struggling in the late game is that they didn't do anything early to put their opponent in a bad position. They're letting their opponent do whatever they want. Um, so we want to focus on just the first 15 minutes of the game. On top of that, you are more, you are always going to play the first 15 minutes. If you're going to play in Castle, if you're going to play Imperial, which is all post 15 minutes, you might not get there every game, but you will always play the first 15 minutes. So if we can win and improve and get better at that, learning the rest of the game will become easier. Now in game, if you get to the 15 minute mark, you still want to play after the 15 minute mark. Don't just leave. But when we talk about reviewing a game, making goals and adjustments, let's focus on the first 15 minutes for now. Next, we want to do is have a plan and commit. What does a clear plan give us? Well, it allows for better eco management and allows you to adjust faster to opponents in relation to your plan. Now, why do I say that? Well, when I watch goal players, a lot of what I see is a, like a brief sketching of a plan or really no plan at all. What that leads to is goal players not reacting very quickly, making weird eco decisions, or just plainly doing too many things, which means they're doing nothing well. I'll see a player who says they want to fast castle, but they're making units. And so they don't make a lot of units, but they don't fast castle very quickly. And then their opponent who is committed to just making units rolls over them or their opponent who is committed to a fast castle beats them to castle. So it is better to have a clear plan to commit to that. Once you have a clear plan, that then makes your eco management easier. Let's use an example. Let's say as English, you are going to one TC all in longbow rush. Sweet. So you're making the council hall. What do you need your eco to be as you hit feudal? Well, longbows require a lot of wood. You want to make maybe a blacksmith and get military upgrades. You want to get eco upgrades. So that allows us to split our villagers. We need the most vills on wood because you need a lot of wood to make buildings on longbows. You need some vills on food to make villagers and longbows have a small food cost. And you need two to three vills on gold so you can continuously get gold for upgrades. That clarifies our eco split. It also means that when you're then playing against the opponent and you're seeing them make decisions, you can easy, more easily change your eco. So if you see an opponent who is making horsemen, you can pause add a few more vills on food, get a barracks down, and start making spears as well. And that change is much faster. You're able to adjust your eco because you're still keeping your main plan, I want a longbow rush, and then adjusting based on what you're seeing from your opponent. If you don't have a plan, your eco is usually always a mess. On top of that, that makes the games a lot easier to review. A lot of times I have gold players say, I don't even know what I'm looking for in my review. I don't know what I did wrong. That just means that you didn't really have a plan that then you could then base the, the 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 things you're looking for on. So for example, 
if whenever you are you have a plan and you're adjusting you're making decisions you can see what your opponent is doing you've made a decision that i'm doing this in response to this then when you go back and look at the game you can say one was that decision correct was there information i didn't have did i execute that correctly or did i float a lot of resources you're able to take the decisions and see everything around it and go did i make the right call did i execute it correctly did my opponent do things i missed all those things allow you to then much easier identify and find issues in your gameplay the next thing and this is probably the piece of advice i give to almost every player and goal that i coach is they need to prioritize the macro cycle what is the micro cycle well first let's start with why I, why i care about this when i see why games are lost it's almost always the same two reasons your eco is worse than your opponents so you can't make units or your eco is fine you're just not using your resources you're floating a thousand wood 800 food 400 gold you just have these resources and you're not using them so this macro cycle eliminates both those things and makes this second nature and if you can follow this cycle and make it something that you're doing consistently you will just start to win games because your eco is better and then you're using that to make units so you have more units than your opponent so what is the cycle the cycle is as follows every free moment you should be checking these things you should make villagers make units check your resources and ask what resources do i have a lot of what is my plan what do i want to do and then adjust your villagers so they're going once again back to that longbow rush example you're checking your resources and you see you have you're floating 800 wood but you're making a lot of longbows but they're all stacked in your council hall you should probably use that extra wood then to make more production make a few farms so that you can then make the amount of longbows you have the resources to make so check your resources, use those resources, and if you need to, adjust your vills. Are you missing a resource? Do you have a lot of production, but you can't make units? Start rallying units to food. That allows you to adjust your villagers and make the right decision. Lastly, go back to micreen your units. And then do it all over again. The people who can do this while fighting are the ones who succeed. Too many times I watch, and I'm going to get more into this in a second, but a lot of times I watch gold players who will micro fight they're fighting they're fighting and the entire time they've missed three villagers they haven't made three villagers so that's basically like your opponent just killed three villagers during that fight which probably meant that you lost that fight in the bigger context of the game so it's important that while you are fighting you have a hockey for your tc and you have a hockey for your production so you're able to make villagers and make units while fighting and you don't have to like click back and click on those things hockeys are really really important here if the only hockeys you use are to make villagers and make units that's going to be huge for you the next thing i want to talk about is making sure you do not hardlock fights oftentimes when i'm watching gold gameplay and i'll often watch with the free camera off which means i'm following the person's perspective i because i, I want to see what are you doing like what are you looking at in the moment a lot of times when a fight happens, even a very small fight, goal players will hard lock and overwatch that fight at the detriment to their eco. So this relates to the previous macro cycle deal. But if you're watching the fight and you're not making units and you're not adjusting your eco, you're just hurting yourself, especially if you've got to make vills. So I pulled up a random game here. I, I found some goal players playing. I observed them and I recorded this game because I knew I could pick any game and watch this happen. So here we have Shock Moppy who's a goal player playing Roos. Let's watch when he takes this fight over here. So he's H'd up to H3, he's made horse archers, he is right now behind the enemy base. Let me skip ahead here to where it happens. Okay, so this is from his point of view. He has some horse archers coming through and they're getting chased by one camel uh, rider and some spearmen. At this point, he's going to start fighting and watch his camera. He is going to micro these horse archers for this little engagement. He's shooting the camel. One of these horse archers should be shooting the, the spearmen, right? But anyway, he's microing this. He's not looking back the entire time. So look at his resources right now. His resources is building up. He's making no units. He's adjusting no villagers. He has nine villagers idle who aren't gathering anything. Now, he did queue up a lot of villagers, which is good. But nothing's happening at base right now. He's not making units. Nothing's being done. And he has watched this fight the entire time. Now, this isn't perfect. The replay will sometimes miss camera movements, but I know he's still watching the fight in some capacity because nothing has changed at home. Nine idols, resources are not being spent. Now we're back at base. You see how long he watched that for? How he, he now has almost the resources to go imp. If the entire time he had been continuously making units to reinforce those units that were moving, that would have been ideal. If those nine villagers had been put on another resource, that would have been more ideal almost always the macro decisions are more important than the micro if when he was in that corner 
over here, if he had just shift clicked his horse archers up the side and gone back and done stuff at base, that would have been way more impactful. Then he would have more units coming down the center. His opponent would have had to adjust. He could have brought those horse archers back around. Almost always, if you watch me play and you watch a lot of high, let, let's start with me. If you watch me play, I will sometimes choose to just bring my units out of combat or sacrifice them if it means I have space to then go do stuff at home. The difference you see in very top level players is they can do it all at once. Their APM is so high that they can bounce between their military, go home and do stuff at eco, things like that. But you notice they will always prioritize their eco. They are never watching a fight for too long. They're not letting resources float unless they want the resources to age up or buy something expensive. So as much as possible, gold players, please, please, please do not hard lock fights. It's almost always more important to go home and at least make villagers and units. Like even if during a fight, you just make villagers and units, that's key. But go home, do a quick macro cycle, come back and then keep microing. Um, and oftentimes you can have a fight going and not look at it unless there's a very important unit that you have to micro. Always better to hop back and do stuff at home. The last thing we want to talk about is scout and push. What does that mean? Well, first of all, scouting is important, but it's important to do all game. Often I will see gold players scout during Dark Age and then never touch their scout again. Or they're not even scouting fully through Dark Age. And what you should be looking for in Dark Age is the location of your opponent's resources, getting sheep, and seeing what's possibility. So they have a lot of forward resources, a lot of resources close to you. That's a great a time to attack. Do they have a lot of stuff in the back? You might need to play a little more passive because it's harder to get to those resources. Do Is all their food on one side? Great, you know the angle to attack from. But the important thing is after Dark Age, you still need to scout. If you have no info, you will make bad decisions and your opponent will surprise you with the things they do because you haven't checked what they're doing. If you don't know what the opponent is doing, go check. You need to just, even if you don't have a scout, send a unit, check to see what are they making? What resources are they pulling? Did, are they are they getting a lot of stone? Like, what can you see and what does that tell you? The reason this is important is that gold players tend to play very passive. Oftentimes I'll say, why are you not doing anything? Well, I thought my opponent was a lot stronger than they are. That's because they're not checking, they're not scouting. So that's why, and when we don't scout, we often overassume enemy strength. We tend to think our opponent has way more than they actually do. So my advice I often say is try being overly aggressive, be more aggressive than you're comfortable with. Try pushing and learn the boundaries of when you can push so that you can start noticing what signs tell me there is an open push opportunity here or what signs are telling me I need to back up. And as always, keep a scout with your army. Overall, I hope you found this video helpful. If you're looking for more support, please check out my coaching. You can check out my coaching Discord for more information. Link is in the description below. Check me out on Twitch. And lastly, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer. And uh, good luck on your games.